This video will show how to do an attribute table join in ArcGIS Pro and to do this we're going to use one of the most common scenarios for needing to do an attribute join which is downloading US Census data. So what I've got on disk is a shapefile containing US Census blocks. Typically when you download data from the US Census website you download a shapefile of some kind of geography whether it's uh, blocks, block groups, or tracts. You get that in a shapefile on its own, but it doesn't have any demographic columns of uh, data uh, because there's so many variables the census collects. So you've got to go download a separate file containing all the columns of data you want, and then you have to join those together. So the data is here in this CSV file. I'm just going to double click this and open it in Excel because it's basically a table, um, and I'll show you what that uh, little file looks like. Um, so it's got uh, some IDs uh, for the census block, which we're going to use for the join. And then it has three columns of data, the total number of people who live in the block, the total number of the people who do not identify as Hispanic or Latino, and the total number of people who do. That's what these three data columns are that are in this uh, table. Um, so let's go into ArcGIS, and first we need to add this data. So I'm just going to click Add Data. Uh, let's add um, both of these things. I can just hit Control and put them both in there. Uh, it is possible to have standalone tables uh, in our GIS that have no um, have no geometry with them. That's what we have right now with this CSV. Uh, we can open this and take a look at it. I'll show you what it looks like here. This is what we just viewed in Excel. And when we view it in ArcGIS, it's going to look um, just a little different, but actually a little more useful here. So um, here's the same data. Notice that this GeoID2, or this ID2 field, has uh, turned into a long number here, so Excel wouldn't show this long of a number, uh, but we can see it here. And this is what we're going to use to do the join on. So let me show you the attribute table for the actual census blocks, where we're going to put these columns. Um, let's open that one. Um, so this is the attribute table for the data we're seeing here. There's a few more fields here. And notice that this GeoID 10 uh, is the same kind of ID, the same length, same format as what we have in that other table. So this is the key field that we're going to join on here. And so we'll need to select that when we actually perform the join. Um, there's a few other fields here, mostly used by the U.S. Census Bureau uh, related to uh, the land and water on the block and some other things. Um, there's a lot of different codes for this state and so on. Um, but this is the main one we're interested in. Notice that this table right now has no demographic information, no population, and that's why we have to do the join. All right, so to do this join, let's right click on the target file. Close these for a second. Um, the target is going to be these census blocks. That's where we want the columns to go. And we're going to go to Joins and Relates and choose to add a join right here. Uh, and this will open a, a tool uh, that will help us to walk through the join. All right, so this tool is relatively simple. It's got the name of the data set that we've opened this tool on. So this would be our census blocks. And now we need to just show those key fields. So the key field, remember, in this uh, census block data set was GeoID 10. And the key field in the, um, the join table, the CSV file, was GeoID2. Um, and then we're going to choose to keep all target features, meaning if there's not data to join on for any particular row, we want to leave that row in the data set. So let's say that we had a block here that had no data for whatever reason coming in from the Census Bureau. We don't want this block to disappear, so we're just going to choose to keep all target features. And we'll run this and uh, have the join go. Now this uh, will also handle the case where uh, we do have an extra header row, if you, if you noticed uh, in this file, uh, that shouldn't be a problem here. And it's actually very fast for the computer to do a join on this data set. Uh, it's not too big of a, of a data set, and it's just working with the tables. Notice that nothing changed on the screen itself in the map, but we should be able to right click this, open the attribute table, and see those new fields joined on. So I've got my census blocks, and if I scroll over, uh, now I see those fields that were joined on for total population, not in Hispanic or Latino, and Hispanic or Latino. Sometimes your field names will get mangled. You need to set field aliases on here or keep some metadata of what's what so that you don't get confused. Um, and, you know, with a little bit of common sense knowing the geography of this area, we, we could kind of look at these three fields and figure out what they are. But 
Sometimes you might have to go back to your original table and take some notes about which field is which. Now, an important thing to remember about this join, it looks like it's now part of this table, but if I were to bring this shapefile into some other program, it would not have these fields. The join is not permanent. The way you can permanently get these fields onto here is to save out a new data set from this. So I could right click and go to data export features. And this is where I can save out a new feature class that's got that join. So I'm going to do that here. Just going to drill into where I've got this stuff. And uh, this is our output location. So I just need to highlight a folder. And then the output name would be, uh, let's just say blocks exported shape. And you know, notice this is in geographic coordinates. So if we wanted to change the uh, coordinate system, we could choose something like a, choose a state plane coordinate system, which may be appropriate for Washington State. I like to do that. Um, we could go down in the state plane coordinate systems, for example. Let's just go under NAD 83 and choose state plane Washington South. And we can run this thing and get our new uh, shapefile out of it. It should just take uh, a few seconds to do this. There's not that many features. And uh, it will add to the map. So here's the uh, exported blocks. Turn off the old ones. And I should see now in this data set that I also have those uh, joined on attributes. If I scroll over. Okay, there they are. These are permanent, so I could take this shapefile and use it in QGIS. I could use it in another map, another project, and so on, and it would have these columns that have been made permanent.